Top. One minute. You want to say hi to your people? Yeah, hello to the people watching in Estec and also to the operational teams in ISOC and in the Fuchino Control Center and the Oberhof Offen Control Center. All right, here's some things to watch for the ignition sequence from minus 17 seconds to minus 6 seconds. The engines, engines are tested automatically in three phases at about 20% of total thrust, then at an intermediate like pressure you, you about 50%. You see the arm falling away there. That's always a very exciting moment. And then finally, at, at uh, full throttle, at minus three seconds, the order is given the DDO, for the full throttle. We'll let the DDO Top. call out the final countdown, La and we'll be back after PKM. Soyuz has cleared the tower. Enjoy the liftoff, everybody. At the DDO, the count final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top, décollage. Well, we, we, we are underway. Soyuz lifted off from French Guiana, I guess. We lost her to the cloud cover because the camera is not following her. The people are already coming in from uh, outside on the terrace. But this is the 250th Ariane space mission to fly from French Guiana. And do you know what number Soyuz flight this is? It's about 1860, no? 1860. 61. It's true. So there's nothing like it. There's a shot, I picked up our camera yeah. again, of Soyuz burning. Tell me, what went through your mind when you watched the liftoff? Well, to be honest, uh, happiness and relief. Lots of people have worked very hard on this here and in, in Europe, and uh, it's fantastic to see it flying. We need these satellites. The boosters and the central core, or second stage, are burning now. The boosters weigh 45 tons each at liftoff. Yep. Yeah. The total mass is 178 tons of the first stage. Yes, the engines run on liquid oxygen and kerosene, the same propellants which are used in each of the three lower stages. And the second stage, similar to the boosters, its ignition occurred on the launch pad along with 20 engines at once on the, on the launch pad. As you saw, this stage burns for about four minutes. Yep. Now remember, Soyuz weighed 300 tons at liftoff. Now, after separation of her boosters in about two seconds, can you guess what her weight will be? Just, just to guess. It's about 135 tons. So it's this is very impressive. This means that it loses half her weight in uh, about two minutes. It's pretty amazing. There's the animation, the cartoon of what it looks like up there. On the bottom of your screen, on the bottom left, our altitude climbing towards 60 kilometers. On the right, our speed approaching two kilometers per second. Looking ahead, briefly, the mission is in two parts. After frigate separation, there will be, that's the fourth stage, there will be a first burn of its engine, which will last for 13 minutes. When this is over, frigate goes into what's called the ballistics phase, where it'll coast for about three hours, making its way toward uh, where the satellites will be separated. And during this time, we'll cut away from the broadcast, but we're not there yet. Yeah, we'll return in the air for the second frigate burn and satellite separation. It's interesting to see that Soyuz is built by RKT's Progress and the Samara Space Center, which also designs and develops the first three stages. Soyuz, as we mentioned, goes back to the first days of the space race, introduced in 1966. Yep. It has everything going for it. It's a reliable vehicle, it's efficient, flexible, it's cost-effective, and right. has handled in one version or another, this is the second, uh, it's an updated version for French Guiana, in all versions, uh, all types of missions, from telecoms, yeah, Earth observation, in, yeah. to weather, science probes, Mars missions even, <laughs> and it's the only manned vehicle able to reach the International Space Station, isn't that right? That's right, Josh. It's impressive. Some basic Soyuz facts. It, it, it orbited the first artificial satellite, the Sputnik, in 1957, and also the first man in space, uh, Yuri Gagarin, in 1961. Also the first woman in Gagarin space, like the first spacewalk, and also it has the highest demonstrated reliability record, close to 99%. 
We've had jettison, uh, jettisoning of the fairing, and you can see the two satellites exposed now to the elements. Those are the two black boxes. In the middle is the dispenser, <coughs> which will push the two satellites away from each other when they are separated. <coughs> Fairing measures how much? It's tall, right? It's a, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a 4.1 meters diameter and 11.4 meters high. I was uh, next to it yesterday, and it's he's, it's really really tall. You were dwarfed. Yes, by, completely. By the yeah, and uh, we can now get rid of it because we are high enough in the atmosphere, so that there is not actually the atmosphere is very thin, so there is no heating or or friction, and then we don't need it to protect the satellites, and then uh, by jettisoning it we have less weight, and the launcher operates better. So it's a good time to get rid of it now. Yes. We can also get rid of the second stage, which is coming up, the extinction of the second stage, coming up in about uh, three seconds. You see the motor burning out and separation of the second stage, ignition of the third stage. There's, so uh, give you yeah. an idea of what that looks like up above. One particularity of the Soyuz is, whereas with Ariane, if you know Ariane 5, we separate the lower stage before igniting the upper stage. Soyuz does just the opposite. The third yep. stage is ignited two seconds before separation of the second stage. It's curious. The lower part of the third stage, which is La called the skirt, yep. is used to channel the flux of this third stage motor ignition down towards the lower stage where it rebounds which I guess gives an added thrust right exactly this means that the third stage is uh, can start firing before separation of the launchers two the elements the the uh, this occurs at uh, 282 seconds after liftoff before uh, this version of Soyuz uh, without the fregat upper stage it was the third stage that put the satellite into the initial earth orbit but uh, not, in, not in this version and you have to see that during these 10 seconds uh, uh, the Soyuz youth will climb four kilometers up to 153 kilometers. You see our altitude over 170 kilometers and our speed 4.3 kilometers. We've been picked up by our first downrange tracking station. It's a boat, actually, in the Atlantic. It's the Naval Transportable Station developed by the CNES. The DDO's voice continues to call out that all is okay on board. He's saying the speed is nominal, the trajectory is normal, and he says also confirms that we've been picked up by the first downrange tracking station. That's perfect. Yep. We're going to go to a launch replay in just a minute. The first of several launch replays, actually, so you can relive those very exciting moments of liftoff. If it's the first time you've seen a launch, it's always very exciting. Indeed. We have uh, cameras at several of the... <coughs> sorry, pardon me. We set several of the observation sites uh, along, the along the base, and as they come in... We, we get their shots. Here comes the replay. Bonne stabilisation du lanceur. And Lifting off rather rapidly. Uh, yes. Much faster than Ariane 5, which yes. is a much heavier vehicle. But not as fast as Vega, which goes up like an arrow. <laughs> I can imagine. Yes, I have never seen a Vega launch. You should come down for, the, Indeed. for that. I think you like that. <laughs> The Galileo program began in 1999 when Europe decided to build its own satellite-based navigation system. Now I want to ask you, uh, you're for me, so what's ESA's role in the program? Okay, Josh, uh, there are basically three main bodies involved in Galileo. We have the European Commission, the European Union is the program manager funding it, and then we have the European Space Agency, and then we also have the European GNSS Agency. GNSS stands G for GNSS? Global Navigation Satellite Systems. So it gets into a complicated acronym. We call it GSA for short. GSA, okay. Yes. And what does GSA do? So, to first we are the architect, ESA is the architect, we have designed and developed uh, the system and we are in charge of making it work and then GSA is in charge of implementing the services and maximizing the use of the Galileo signal. So, so ESA overall Overall, is his job is to oversee and, and fund, fund the program? No, the funding is done by the European Union. Okay. So we are in charge of uh, designing and procuring the, the system. Uh, right now we are in the, in the finishing the deployment phase, which uh, means that uh, we are still uh, in, uh, f uh, finishing the deployment of the ground segment and then at the end of the year we will start the exploitation phase. It's a different phase in which uh, GSA, the European GNSS uh, Agency, will have uh, the role of uh, developing, of uh, exploiting the, the services, which will start this year in October with the initial services. 
Soyuz continues to fly north, her path uh, north, then east over Europe, where she's picked up by the Osagel station that is near Toulouse, that is coming up. Then she'll continue east over Russia, and then south, where she'll be picked up by Perth in Australia. This, this station there will see separation of the two Galileo satellites, just actually south of Australia. Coming up on third stage separation, at uh, 175 kilometers, we're right where we should be. 